Many people compare a copper wire sending an electrical signal to that of a neuron sending its signal, but they're actually quite different. A copper wire will have a whole bunch of atoms inside that play hot potato with electrons, passing it down. But a neuron is quite different. It doesn't pass electrons down its axon. What it does is it will throw positive or negative ions inside or outside of the neuron itself in a domino-like fashion. This is called an action potential, and that's gonna be the focus of this mini lecture. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mark Todorovic, and let's take a look at action potentials. Let's first orientate ourselves to what I've drawn up on the board. So I've got one neuron here speaking to another neuron, and we've got the axon of this neuron going all the way down to the axon terminal. We've got a graph here that's gonna show us what's happening inside and outside of this neuron, and we've got a whole bunch of different channels that we need to understand in order to understand an action potential. Where should we begin? Well, we need to begin with an understanding of ions. They're the charged atoms or elements, and the fact that they're differently distributed from outside of a neuron to inside of a neuron. You're probably aware that if I were to take sodium ion, that you'd know that most of the positive sodium ions sit outside of our cells, with very few sodium ions inside our cells. If I were to take potassium, you're probably aware that most of the potassium, positive potassium, is sitting inside of our cells compared to outside. And if we were to take some other ions, you'd probably be aware that most of the calcium is sitting outside of our cells, and most of the chloride is sitting outside of our cells. If we were to add it all up, because there's other ions inside, there's other ions outside, and if we were to add all these ions up, their concentration would be around about even, and their charge would be around about even, at least on paper. But for neurons, it is slightly different. What do I mean? Well, let's take a look. We now can see that there's a concentration difference. Most sodium's outside compared to inside. Most potassium is inside compared to outside, which means that what this sodium wants to do is go down its concentration gradient, so diffusion, and go from outside in. This potassium wants to diffuse from inside out. Now, the thing is, sodium can't diffuse in. It's channels in red, so I've drawn up the sodium channels in red here for sodium and the blue potassium channels here. Sodium cannot diffuse in because these channels are snap shut, the door is closed. But for potassium, there's some leaky channels. The door for the potassium channels is creaked open just a little bit, which means that some potassium can diffuse outside. Now think about this, potassium has a positive charge associated with it. So we're carrying some positive stuff outside of this neuron. Now in addition to that, we've got a pump called the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Its job is to throw three sodium that's inside the cell to th throw it outside. It throws three sodium outside and it takes two potassium and throws it inside. Now have a look. Have a look at the charge. Three positive things outside and only two positive things thrown inside. Plus positive stuff leaking outside from the potassium channel. What you can see is that there's a net positive charge outside compared to inside the neuron. In actual fact, if I were to take a voltometer where I were to measure the charge inside of this neuron and measure the charge outside the neuron and connect it to a voltometer to measure the charge in millivolts, we would find that the inside of the neuron is slightly negative compared to the outside of the neuron. So you could say the outside of the neuron is slightly positive compared to the inside. Now, this actual charge difference from inside to outside the membrane is sitting at around about negative 70 millivolts at around about negative 70 millivolts. This is called the resting membrane potential. Resting because the neuron's not doing anything, it's not firing off, it's not sending a signal, it's at rest. Membrane potential because the charge difference is at the membrane and has the potential to do something, to send a signal. So again, inside the neuron, negative 70, 
it's slightly negative compared to outside the neuron, all right? And so even in here, it's negative, right? Compared to outside. All right, now let's talk about this neuron wanting to send a signal or not. So it can either be triggered to send a signal or it can be told, I don't want you to send a signal. So an excitatory signal can be sent or an inhibitory signal can be sent. So let's take a look at this. This neuron wants to speak to this neuron. And like I said, it can either send an excitatory or inhibitory signal. Let's highlight these. If it's an excitatory signal, it's going to send excitatory neurotransmitters. An example of an excitatory neurotransmitter is glutamate. Glutamate. If it wants to send an inhibitory signal, it needs to send an in inhibitory neurotransmitter like GABA. GABA is well known as being an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Let's first start with the excitatory. This glutamate needs to diffuse across the synapse. So this gap between two neurons, that's called the synapse, and it's going to diffuse across. It needs to bind to very specific receptors, receptors that are specific to glutamate itself. So one of those is right here. Now this receptor is a sodium channel. So it binds to the receptor which is associated with a sodium channel. This lets sodium in or out. So sodium's red, this channel's red. We've got a whole bunch of sodium channels here as well. You can also see the blue potassium channels and we've got pink calcium channels and green chloride channels. But let's focus on the sodium channels. Glutamate binds to it. It tells this sodium channel to flip its lid. It opens up. Now sodium wants to go down its concentration gradient, diffusion. So this sodium will diffuse inside. Now sodium has a positive charge associated with it, which means it makes inside this neuron slightly positive. And if we take a look at this graph, what does that mean? It means that it will start to bump up as being slightly more positive, going into the positive. Now, if, so here's the thing, it can do it to this channel here, and there's gonna be a whole bunch of these sodium channels, right, around this area to, that's binding to this glutamate. If you've got a whole bunch of sodium coming in at one time, it could be enough to go all the way up to this negative 55. This is an important point. Let's just leave it at that though, negative 55, right? Remember that. We term this the threshold. Threshold, very important. Now this glutamate, it may bind to this receptor here for calcium and tell calcium to flip its lid, open up. And the calcium may come in. Now calcium is also positively charged. So it's gonna make the inside of this neuron slightly positive as well. And again, the same thing will happen, it'll bump up. Now if enough positive sodium come in or positive calcium or both to hit negative 55, that's gonna trigger this neuron to fire a signal off as soon as it hits negative 55. I'll talk about that in a sec. This is called an excitatory, excitatory postsynaptic potential, EPSP, an excitatory postsynaptic potential. It's excitatory. It's making the inside positive, hitting that negative 55 threshold, and if that's hit, a signal sent. I'll talk about that in a sec. Let's just go to GABA, the inhibitory. Now, when GABA binds to GABA-specific receptors, it might bind to this potassium channel, which means it opens the potassium channel up and potassium goes down its concentration gradient, leaking out, taking that potassium with it, making it positive outside but negative inside, which means the resting membrane potential doesn't move into the positive, it actually moves down into the negative. So it's doing the opposite. It's negative 55 says send a signal. We're going in the opposite direction, so it's really saying don't send a signal. Or the GABA combine to chloride channels. Open, tell it to flip its lid and the chloride will diffuse in. Now it's doing a similar thing. It's making it negative inside because chloride has a negative charge. Again, dropping it down. This is called an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Inhibitory postsynaptic 
synaptic potential. And this is the way that neurons are told to fire off or not fire off. But let's talk about an action potential. Let's say we want it to fire off. Excitatory postsynaptic potential. So we've let in either through our excitatory neurotransmitter, positive sodium or positive calcium, and we've made it positive inside this particular area here. So much so that it's gone from being negative 70, it's resting membrane potential, up to negative 55. Negative 55, I told you, is important. It is actually the key. It's the key to open the very first sodium channel. This sodium will flip its lid. Now, think about this. Negative 55, which is a millivolt, it's a charge. It's the key to open this channel. So, this is called a voltage-gated sodium channel. Gated because it can either be open or closed, and voltage is the key. So, it's voltage-gated. It can be ligand or ligand-gated, which is what these are here. That means chemical-gated. Right? But here, it's voltage gated. And negative 55 is that voltage, that's the key. Opens up, this sodium will diffuse inside, carrying that positive charge with it. What does that do? It makes this area of the neuron more positive, and then this area of the neuron hits negative 55, which tells the next sodium channel to flip its lid, voltage-gated sodium channel, and that sodium diffuses inside, carrying the positive charge with it, making in here negative 55, opening the next sodium channel. So you can see this domino-like effect. I told you it's very different to a copper wire sending a signal where all the atoms remain inside and they just chuck electrons to each other. Here, things just move in, charged ions just move in in a domino-like effect. Again, here, this sodium goes in, makes it positive enough to negative 55 to open up the next sodium channel, and this sodium will diffuse in. This signal here is called an action potential. Now, let's draw it up on the graph because it doesn't just remain here at negative 55. So much sodium has moved inside of this neuron that it's really positive now. So positive that it's gone from negative 55 up to positive 30. This process of going from negative 70 up to positive 30 is called depolarization. And you might be thinking, why is it called depolarization? Well, when we began with this neuron, it was negative inside, positive outside. That's called polarized. If something is different from one side to another, that's called being polarized, right? We've changed it. So it's depolarized, and that's why that's called depolarization. Here's the other thing with positive 30. Negative 55 was the key to open up the voltage-gated sodium channels, but positive 30 is now the key to close those voltage-gated sodium channels. They shut off now, they're, they're closed. It's also the key to open the voltage-gated potassium channels, and now the potassium diffuses outside, carrying its positive charge with it. Now, if it carries its positive charge with it, the inside becomes negative again. That potassium moves outside, and the inside becomes negative again. Now, we've gone back to it being negative inside, positive outside, which means this graph drops back down, right, down to negative 70. In actual fact, so much positive potassium leaks outside, because remember, this one's leaky too, that it goes below the resting membrane potential of negative 70. It goes below that. This whole process is called repolarization, because we're going back to being polarized. And the part where it goes below negative 70, this is called hyperpolarization. This is called hyperpolarization. Why does it go down to that? It's called the refractory period, so the neuron can't send another signal. In actual fact, if we did, if we released more glutamate, could we send another signal? The answer is no. Why? Because all the sodium is already inside this neuron. It's there. The potassium's outside. It's flipped. The sodium's in, potassium's out. We need that sodium to go back outside. We need that potassium to go back inside. How can we possibly do that? I know. The sodium-potassium ATPase pump. 
It's constantly working, churning out, throwing this sodium outside, taking the potassium that's outside, throwing it inside, and it resets the neuron so it can send another signal. What we've just worked through here is graded potentials, whether it can be excitatory or inhibitory, and then the result of stimulating a neuron called an action potential. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you wanna contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic, at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.